What is going on everybody and welcome to part 9 of our deep learning with neural networks tensorflow and python tutorial series. In this video what we're going to be talking about is using the GPU version of tensorflow which allows us to use obviously our GPU or our CUDA enabled GPU. So to start you're obviously going to need a CUDA enabled GPU. Now we'll just say in theory you can continue following along with everything that we do sort of in for the rest of this series but Honestly, I wouldn't because a lot of what we're going to be doing now is going through example code and actually running the example code, seeing what the output is and all that. So, I mean, yeah, you can come th go through the code with us uh, and still like pick up some things, but really you're going to want to be able to run this stuff. So what you're going to need is a NVIDIA GPU with a compute capability that is greater than three. Also, just as a warning, I suppose, this video, I'm just gonna be running through the process of getting all this set up. I'm not actually, it's really not even possible for me. There might be a way, but it's really gonna be, it would be very difficult for me to film this process simply because a lot of what we're doing here uh, is installing an operating system. So filming that's pretty difficult unless you're in like a virtual box. But then when you're trying to do like the graphics card stuff in a virtual box, you can't do it there. So I can't film any of that. So anyway, I'm just going to run through this. You can follow along either here in the text-based version. It's not going to make a huge difference. Anyway, uh, you'd want to pick up an NVIDIA GPU with a compute capability greater than three. Go to the text-based version if you need a list. Uh, and then we'll come down here and uh, you can use CUDA enabled GeForce products. And these are like your desktop GPUs. And basically as long as you've got something better or something equal to or better than the GTX 650, then you're totally fine. So to give you an idea, like a GeForce, uh, let's say GTX 650, you could probably pick one of these up on eBay for like $70 or something. So uh, I highly, highly, highly recommend that even if you don't currently have one, go get one <laughs> because um, not not necessarily a 650 I, ideally you want to get basically the you want to get the best GPU the best single GPU that you can uh, whenever I first started working with this stuff I was on a couple of GTX 980s and I was running them in SLI and I that's when I found that SLI is not as ideal as it's marketed to be so so anyways I have since upgraded myself to a Titan X which is absolutely glorious I would highly recommend a Titan X even though Nvidia did not send me one for free that was very rude of them anyways <laughs> moving along uh, so make sure you get an Nvidia GPU compute capability greater than three uh, from there what you're gonna want to do is if you are on Windows obviously if you're already on Linux or if you're already on Mac OS you don't need this step but if you're on Windows what you need to do is dual boot into Linux, or I suppose you could build a new computer and just put Linux on it. But if you're if you want to continue using your main computer, um, then you'll want to dual boot Linux and Windows. <clears throat> so to do that, what you're going to want to do is go down to your Start menu, search for Create and Format, and basically you're looking for Disk Management. Pull that up, and then it'll look something like this. And what you'll do is you'll right click on the C drive and then you can choose shrink volume. And then when you do that, you'll get a window kind of like this one. And basically what it tells you is, you know, what this, what's the size and then how much shrinking you could possibly do. And then you decide, okay, how much size do I want? And however much you shrink by is how large of a partition you're giving to Ubuntu. So uh, do that, and when you hit shrink, this is a plausibly very long process. Like, it could take hours. Because what's happening, especially if you have like an older hard drive, you've got files that are stored all over the place on that hard drive. And in order to, to do what we want to do here and make some unallocated space, it needs to be all one chunk. So it has to move everything aside to make room for that one chunk. So this is a very long process. On that same note, this is moving things and doing things to your hard drive. Anytime that happens, you risk corruption. So just this process alone is relatively risky. So back up whatever you care about. Also, don't stop this process just because it's taking a few hours. Get over it. Maybe do it overnight while you sleep or something. If you have like a solid state drive, it's actually pretty quick. Like it did this within like a few minutes. But uh, I've heard horror stories of people using this on like regular hard drives. Uh, and it's not not great. <clears throat> anyway, moving along, once you've done that, you'll want to download 
an ISO of Ubuntu. You, if you've been following along, you might actually already have an ISO of Ubuntu. If not, you can go to ubuntu.com and we'll just head there real quick. And then you can go to, where's down, download. And I would just recommend that, okay, well, you, we're going to be developing in it, so you'd probably want Ubuntu desktop. You don't necessarily have to have Ubuntu desktop. You could go for the server, um, but desktop's what I'm choosing. And rather than downloading it from their little site, I would choose alternative downloads and torrents and download the torrent. It'll be a lot faster and use like uTorrent or something like that to uh, download it. So once you have Ubuntu, rather if you follow along with like the virtual box, we were able to just like specify where the ISO was and it was super simple. With an actual installation, it's not gonna work. You need an installation media like a CD or you can use a USB drive. I use this universal USB installer. Um, and obviously don't click this download button. You would come down here probably and choose this one. <laughs> Anyway, you can use a different one if you want. Um, doesn't really matter. You just need something that's going to create a boot media out of your USB drive. Once you've done that and put the ISO on there, <clears throat> what you're going to want to do is restart your computer. Sometimes it'll boot automatically into that boot media, but many times it won't. Usually in most computers, you press F11 on startup at the same time you would press, say, delete to enter BIOS. Do that. Choose your USB drive, and bam, you're installing Ubuntu make sure you choose to install Ubuntu alongside of Windows. Do not replace Windows unless that's what you want to do. Once you have Ubuntu and you're all installed, this is kind of where if you're on Mac OS or otherwise on Ubuntu already, you could, you'd be picking back up. And basically we need to do these three major steps. We need to install the CUDA toolkit, CUDNN, and then finally the GPU version of TensorFlow. If you're following my tutorial, I'm doing CUDA Toolkit, obviously 7.5, and CUDNN 4.0. There is, I'm pretty sure, CUDA Toolkit 8 release candidate is available right now. Where are you? Yeah. So CUDA Toolkit 8 is, you could go with that if you really want. Whoops, not Windows. <laughs> Let's see. Is this not? I don't think this is. I'm not sure how to get to it, but I'm obviously just blind. Anyway, <laughs> somewhere you can download the release candidate if you want, but probably many of you, by the time you're seeing this, might be a later version. Go ahead and download whatever the latest versions are. You probably won't be in trouble, but you can also go to tensorflow.org and just see like what they say is supported by TensorFlow. And right now, that's 7.5 for Kuda Toolkit and then 4.0 QDNN. So, um, so yeah. Also... Another lovely thing is the, for whatever reason, the CUDA toolkit only supports up to Ubuntu 15.04. You can still use it on 16.04, and I would highly recommend you use Ubuntu 16.04, not 15.04. So go ahead and use 16.04, and there's really only one thing that's majorly different in the installation process, so it's super simple. It took me a little bit to figure it out, though. But, but anyway... Uh, and I saw some crazy, there was, there's a few guides for doing it and they do all this weird stuff when there was like just one thing you have to do different anyway. So cool. So you'll get the CUDA toolkit. This is a run. It's like a dot run file that you're going to want to get. Don't get the dot deb. At least when I did it, uh, that was, it didn't have like a valid checksum. So yeah. Uh, it, like it's using an outdated encryption for the checksum. So anyway, uh, get the run file. QDNN is actually just a bunch of files that you're going to copy and paste into your CUDA toolkit directory. So that's just a download and extraction. And then the GPU version of TensorFlow, you're also going to go ahead. Well, that is like the very last step. Also, you're going to need your driver for NVIDIA. Um, I guess that I didn't mention that as like a major step. I guess it's not really a, a major step in this process. But anyway, you'll also want to get the latest NVIDIA graphics drivers for your GPU. So there's a link for that down here. So once you have all of those things like already downloaded, then you're gonna wanna enter uh, into TTY mode. So this is another time when I wouldn't be able to record. So you press Control Alt F1, enter TTY. I couldn't tell you what that stands for, but someone comment below, tell us what TTY stands for. Um, and then you're gonna wanna log in and then run a sudo stop light DM or it's sudo light DM stop, just depends. Anyway, run that and that kind of stops your, I'm pretty sure like all your GUI stuff from running or your graphics stuff from running. Then uh, you're going to navigate. I could just be blowing hot smoke. I actually don't know what light DM is, but I'm pretty sure that's what it does. 
Anyway, navigate to your downloads directory. And so this would be like home, whatever your username is, then downloads. And the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is install that graphics driver. So that would be, and maybe you wouldn't wanna install this first. I'll explain a problem I hit later on, but this is the order that I did things in anyways. So, um, although I think I skipped the CH mod. Yeah, so once you've done light DM stop and you've navigated to that downloads directory, do a CH mod plus X and then do that against both of these files, whatever the nvidia.run file is, and then the CUDA 7.5. So this is your graphics driver basically, and then this is the CUDA, or, uh, CUDA toolkit for 7.5. So make sure you're, you allow those both to be executable. Once you've done both of those things, go ahead and install the graphics driver. It'll probably error that you're not on like a 32-bit system or something, and that's totally fine, unless you're actually on a 32-bit system. Uh, anyway, install the driver, and then install CUDA Toolkit 7.5. When you install CUDA Toolkit 7.5, make sure you use the override parameter. That is going to override the check for whatever compiler you're using. So for whatever reason, if you let the CUDA Toolkit check for the compiler, it, it wants an exact version and not a greater than version for whatever reason. So you just use dash dash override. And that's literally all you have to do to install this on 1604. Other than I suppose that as, as you, after you run this command, it's gonna, you'll go through a license agreement, you'll press and hold the space bar for like an hour. And then uh, it has like some default like paths and stuff. But I think even before that, at some point it's gonna ask you, do you want to install the, the graphics driver? No, you don't want to install their graphics driver. Other than that, everything's defaults. Yes, congratulations when you're all done. Um, once you've got, if you haven't already downloaded the QDNN files, you'll want to make sure you grab those, extract them, and then basically what you're going to do is copy and paste them into that official CUDA directory. So you'll change directory into your downloads. You'll do this sudo cp command here. That just co uh, is going to take these includes and copy and paste them into the CUDA, the official CUDA directory includes. You're going to take the lib64 stuff, same thing. You're going to grant permissions. And then basically you're all den done, but you're going to want to export some paths real quick. So you want to, you can edit the, uh, edit this. I use nano. If you want to use something else, go for it. Anyway, and then just add these two lines at the very end. This just gives you the path basically to this, to the CUDA and CUDNN and all those fun things. Also, if you want to be able to use sudo alongside, like if you're going to say sudo Python, some script that uses TensorFlow, you'll want to actually also add these to your ETC environment. So make sure you do that. If that's all done, then all you need to do is install the GPU version of TensorFlow. These are just the same, well, sort of, I've added Python 3 and stuff. But anyway, basically the same instructions as you can find on tensorflow.org. Go ahead and install them, export that binary. You're going to install it and then do Python 3 in your shell, try to import TensorFlow, and hopefully you see something like this. And you just see a bunch of successfullys right here. <laughs> okay. So if you've done that, congratulations. You got the GPU version of TensorFlow working and you're done. Uh, if you're having some sort of <clears throat> error with libqdnn or really any of these, chance it, but usually it's libqdnn, honestly. Um, you probably didn't copy and paste that stuff or something like that. Whenever I was like first going through the installation process, I don't, I did not find it to be very clear that what you were like, you download libqdnn and it's like, okay, what do I do with this? Like, I, there was no instructions after that, or at least I could, I did not see those instructions, so that took me a while. Also, the first time you run through this, everything's looking great, and you're like, awesome, and then you'll like run something overnight morning will come, everything's great, you'll maybe go back into Windows, and then later that night you're like, okay, I'm gonna run another algorithm tonight. You boot up into Ubuntu, and then suddenly you've got like an infinite login loop, or you've got some really disorienting graphics going on on your screen. I did not know what was doing this. Uh, first time I just reinstalled everything, including the operating system, which sucked. But then later I found out all I really needed to do was just reinstall the graphics drivers. So that's why I was saying like maybe after you install uh, like uh, the CUDA toolkit and stuff, install your graphics driver. But I don't really see why that would be totally necessary because we did not install their graphics driver. But anyways, that kept happening to me. And like I said, all I really needed to do, like if that happens to you, go back into TTY with that control F1, sudo stop light DM, 
or that sudo light dm stop and then go to downloads and reinstall the graphics driver dot with the, that dot run file anyway after you've done all that uh, you should hopefully be able to import and if you've got this then now you can actually use the GPU version of TensorFlow and then you can have a lot more fun with us as we do some of the more bleeding edge types of things that we can do with um, neural networks. So if you have questions or something isn't going right or whatever feel free to comment below. I'll do my best to help you out. I've installed the GPU version of TensorFlow now a handful of times so I'm not an expert but I've hit quite a few errors anyways along the way. Also, if you do hit errors, like you can Google the errors and you'll find your answer almost certainly. But I'll do my best to help you out if you can't figure it out. Otherwise, questions, comments, concerns, whatever, leave them below. Till next time.